Good evening. I'd like to call the uh, Wheat Ridge Planning Commission for March 7th, 2013 to order, please. Uh, may I get a roll call of members? Dan Brinkman. Present. Alan Bucknam. Absent. Steve Timms. Here. Scott Ohm. Here. Richard Matthews. Here. Amanda Weaver. Here. Monica Duran. Here. Tracy Gilner. Absent. Would uh, everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move to approve the order of the agenda. Second. I have a first and a second on the uh, order of the agenda. Any discussion on the agenda tonight? Okay, call for a vote, please. I move to approve the minutes of the February 21st, 2013 meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> I have a first and a second for the approval of the minutes for February 21st. Any uh, discussion on those minutes? Okay, seeing none, I will call for a vote. Please revote. The next item on the agenda is a public forum. This is an opportunity for any person to speak on any subject that is not appearing on the agenda. And is anyone here for any other items other than the 44th Avenue rezoning? Okay. So seeing none, we do have one public hearing tonight. Uh, it is case number WZ-13-01. This is an application filed by Stephen uh, Pelletier for approval of a zone change from res restricted commercial to mixed-use neighborhood for the property located at 6700 West 44th Avenue. And does staff have a presentation tonight on this case? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Good evening. For the record, I'm Lauren Michalak, a planner with the City of Wheat Ridge Community Development Department. Tonight, I am presenting case number WZ-1301. I would like to enter into the public record the contents of the case file, the zoning ordinance, the comprehensive plan, and this digital presentation. The property is within the city of Wheat Ridge. All appropriate notification and posting requirements have been met, and the Planning Commission does have jurisdiction to hear this case. If we could get the lights dimmed a little bit, thank you. <coughs> so the first... Um, slide I have here is just an aerial of the property. Subject property is in the northeast quadrant of the city and it's outlined here in bright blue in the center of the screen. The site is on the south side of West 44th Avenue, north is to the top of this picture. Um, the site is located, takes the entire block between Pierce and Otis Streets. It does include two parcels which were developed together. You can faintly see a gray line down the center denotes the two parcels. Um, the total size of the property is just over an acre at 44,000 square feet. This image is an excerpt from our zoning map. Um, the current zoning on the property is restricted commercial and it's surrounded by a variety of different land uses. Um, along West 44th Avenue, most parcels are zoned commercially. Um, the orange color is indicating that restricted commercial zone district. The pink color also on 44th to the northeast here is commercial one zoning. Um, as far as uses go, on the north side of the street, on the northwest corner of the intersection, this is a three and a half acre nursery and garden. You can see the greenhouses here in this aerial. Um, directly across from the subject lot, we've got a multi-tenant little shop at building. Um, and in the C1 parcels, there's a small office that's in a converted residence, a bar, and then um, on the corner, here at Newland is a gas station. And then on the south side of 44th, also zone restricted commercial, we have a self-serve car wash on the west side across Pierce Street, the subject property, of course, and then on the east side across Otis, there's a small cigar shop. Um, the southern half of this image is colored in a yellow-green color, and that's a established residential neighborhood. It's zoned residential two or R2, and that is our single and two-family zone district, and all of those properties contain single or two-family homes. 
Um, I do have a couple of images. It's a large property, like I said, taking up the entire block there between Pierce and Otis. So this is a little bit of a distorted panoramic. We're standing on 44th and looking south of the subject lot. The building was originally constructed about 35 years ago in 1979. The western portion on the right-hand side of your screen, this um, darker color behind the tree, is an office building. The eastern portion, the lower side of the building, is a Excuse warehouse. Excuse me, is it Harlan Street? I'm sorry. Oh, that is incorrect. Oh. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, this is, I did not update that caption from my last presentation. This is 6700 West 44th Avenue. Thank you. Um, the east side of the property, so the left side of your screen, is um, lower part of the building, and that's a warehouse area that has most recently been used by the former property owner, Lost and Found, Inc., um, the two areas, the office and the warehouse spaces, are connected by an enclosed hallway. And also in this image, you can see there's a lot of mature landscaping um, in, the, in the front yard there along 44th. You can also see that each use area, the office and warehouse portions, have their own parking areas. They're separated, so one on the west side and one on the east side. And I may not have updated any of these captions, so I apologize for that. Um, again, a view of the subject property on 44th Avenue. This photo is looking south, but this time down Otis Street at the warehouse portion of the building. Um, the applicant is proposing to purchase the property and move his auto restoration business into this eastern side of the existing building. So another picture of the east facade. Um, the applicant's business is currently located in Arvada, but he's interested in this particular site because it would provide about 9,000 square feet of indoor storage and workspace, um, as well as accommodating a smaller retail component closer to 44th Avenue. And one last picture, um, the neighbors to the south, this image is showing that shared lot line between the subject lot and the residential property to the south. Um, the key features here is that the applicant has proposed enhancing this shared area, so perhaps enhanced landscaping and updated fence. Um, and what you can also see in this image is an older accessory structure. That's what this gray um, building is behind the fence, and so he has proposed to remove that building. A little bit about the current and proposed zoning. Um, as I mentioned, the applicant's looking to purchase it and move his auto restoration business to Wheat Ridge. And the reason fundamentally for the zone change request is that auto-related businesses are simply not permitted in the restricted commercial zone district. Um, this includes auto sales, minor or major auto service, and even the sale of vehicle parts. Um, the RC and MUN zone districts are really very similar in, in other commercial senses in that they both allow a limited range of neighborhood serving businesses. Um, a notable difference, as I mentioned, is how they treat auto businesses and outdoor storage. Um, and restricted commercial outdoor storage is permitted with certain screening requirements, um, and it's not permitted at all in any of our mixed-use zone districts. So the table on the bottom of the slide is showing how these types of businesses are classified in the mixed-use neighborhood zone district. Um, fundamentally, auto-oriented businesses are permitted, but on a very limited basis. Um, so. There is repair, rental um, types of businesses that are permitted as conditional uses, but no outdoor storage is allowed. Um, vehicle sales with an indoor sales lot are, are permitted as a conditional use, whereas outdoor vehicle sales, your traditional display lot, is not permitted. Um, and then finally, in the mixed use zone districts, auto parts are classified just as general retail, and so that would be a permitted use. Um, in this case, the applicant has described his business as a restoration use, and so they primarily locate and sell specialty parts for Camaros and early American cars. Um, he's explained that they do a handful of full vehicle restorations each year, but that could take place inside the building. Um, they're a specialty business, and they're not your traditional sort of Midas or oil change destination. Um, so despite not being your traditional auto repair, they still fall under that top category um, where their use would be a conditional use. What that means is if the zone change is approved, um, the applicant would follow up with an application for a conditional use permit, and that is an application that's reviewed by staff. We look at business operations, site design, and any potential impacts. So this is the first step of two um, for this application. 
In this case, um, there's no proposed changes to the site um, or the building. There's no new development other than those minor uh, improvements that I mentioned regarding landscaping and fencing. In any case, this table does compare the development standards that would apply if the site were to redevelop, uh, either under the current or proposed zoning. Um, as far as uses, we've discussed the treatment of auto-related auto businesses. Um, MUN zoning would also allow new residential uses, which are not currently allowed in restricted commercial. Um, as far as building form and design, there's really very little difference between the mixed-use neighborhood and restricted commercial zone districts. So each have architectural standards that have requirements related to materials and transparency and material variation. Um, the difference there being that the mixed use code dictates for MUN and the architectural and site design manual would dictate those standards under the current zoning. Um, as far as building height, maximum building heights are the same in both districts. 50 feet for a strictly commercial building and no higher than 35 feet if the building contains any residential use. Um, build two requirements, again, are very similar on the primary frontage, so on West 44th Avenue. If the site was ever to redevelop, the building would need to be closer to 44th Avenue. 60% um, of the frontage would need to include a building within 12 feet of that front property line. Um, and then on the south side, that, that setback that's closest to the residential properties, again, very similar. The setback is based on the height of the building. So there is a five foot difference as between the MUN and RC, um, but both based on height. And then lastly on here, I have um, the ratio between lot coverage and landscaping is comparable. Um, there is a lower landscape requirement in the mixed use district, particularly if redevelopment resulted in a mixed um, use building. The other thing I should mention that's not shown on this table is that the mixed-use district is particularly sensitive to adjacent residential uses. So as the commission is aware, there are um, increased setbacks, enhanced landscaping, and also a requirement that a taller building have upper floor step back. So a third and fourth floor would need to be farther away from those residential properties. Um, and that's unique to the mixed-use district. As is required for zone change, um, a neighborhood meeting was held in January and six neighbors attended. This included residents from the neighborhood and also um, nearby business owners. And primarily we were discussing um, the difference between restricted commercial and mixed use neighborhood because it is subtle. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that was understood. And then we also discussed the, the two separate processes for the rezoning and the conditional use permit um, if the rezoning was approved. Um, this week I have received two phone calls from neighbors who couldn't be here tonight. There weren't any um, concerns expressed. There's been no objection or written comment received. It was really questions, again, about process because they couldn't be here, explain that there'll be a second public hearing before city council, um, and then a concern. Um, essentially, the neighbor was hoping that he lives on Otis, and he was hoping that Otis would remain residential in character and that traffic would continue to stay primarily on 44th Avenue. Um, so those were the most specific comments I've received so far. Um, after we received the application, we did do the standard referral period um, to other city departments and utility agencies, and we didn't receive any concerns about the zone change. Again, if the zone change is approved and if the conditional use permit is issued, um, there'd likely be an interior remodel in the building, and so the applicant would need to follow up then with the fire department, um, the building division, and possibly the sanitation district if any sort of a grease or oil trap is needed. All right. Um, as you're aware, we use several criteria to evaluate all zone change requests, and primary among those is consistency with the comprehensive plan and Vision Wheat Ridge adopted in 2009. These two images are both from that comprehensive plan. Um, the top image shows West 44th Avenue um, with this light pink dotted line, and that indicates that West 44th is designated a neighborhood commercial corridor. Um, I've tried to highlight the subject property with a little X, but these get to be busy maps. So the properties right where my mouse is, um, and in the second map, this is coming from the economic development portion of the plan, um, the plan identifies the intersection of Pierce and 44th as a neighborhood commercial center. Um, and that designation means that the intersection is really, should be a commercial cluster with a mix of uses. Um, and a stated goal is explicitly to promote opportunities for smaller and specialty businesses, particularly in this area of a neighborhood uh, commercial center. 
So a rezoning to mixed-use neighborhood staff feels um, would encourage a mix of uses on the street and potentially enable the relocation of a specialty business here to Wheat Ridge. Um, the comprehensive plan also sets a pretty explicit goal of protecting established residential neighborhoods, particularly where they abut these commercial corridors. Um, and so we feel that mixed-use neighborhood zoning has been designed to protect those neighborhoods, like I mentioned, with the enhanced setbacks, landscaping, and those upper floor step backs. Ultimately, um, we have recommended approval of this zone change request. I think there was a more extensive analysis in the staff report, but briefly, um, the existing and proposed zone districts are comparable, and staff feels the zone change will not have an adverse effect on public health, safety, or welfare. Um, as I mentioned, we do find that the mixed-use neighborhood zone district is supported by the city's adopted plans, particularly the comprehensive plan. And finally, the mixed-use neighborhood zone district is compatible with the surrounding areas. It's an appropriate zone district in an area where there's adjacent commercial and residential uses. Um, for those reasons, we're recommending approval, and that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for that presentation. At this time, we'll uh, take questions from the commission to staff, starting with Commissioner Ohm. Yeah, hi. Um, is there, isn't there another mixed-use neighborhood um, probably within a mile uh, on 44th? There is a, um, the caption that mentioned Harlan Street uh, is a property that was rezoned to mixed-use neighborhood in January, and that is at 44th in Harlan, so it is close um, to the east of the subject property. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Duran, any questions for staff? Is there a plan uh, to put up a privacy fence on that south side, right? In that residential area? There, we haven't right um, had specific discussions of what that fence would look like, but that is one of the um, proposals that the applicant gave us. When we go to the, if the rezoning is approved and we and we review a conditional use permit, among mm -hmm. the submittals would be a site plan. And so that is one of the features that we'd be looking at is what is the design of that fence? What's the height? What's the construction? So likely a privacy fence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Brinkman? And the applicant is in the audience, so he may be able to answer that. Thank you. Um, just a couple questions. Um, why are we looking at old photos by any, by the way? These oh, look like of winter photos. Um, well, this actually doesn't reflect what it looks like in the back of the building right now. No, these are from <coughs> about four months ago. It's it's pretty common that we take pictures the first time we start dealing with property, and then I didn't. Okay. I didn't get back out there. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, it doesn't look like this now. It's trashed back there. There's a lean-to back there. There's okay. couch. There's yep. stuff all over the place, which leads me to my question. Um, since there's no outdoor storage allowed and that, that lean-to is there, would that have to be removed before the zoning is approved? Um, or is there a period of... Well, the, the applicant doesn't own the property yet, so I don't know that they'd be allowed to remove it yet. Okay. If, if they... If the rezoning was approved and the conditional use permit went through, probably one of the conditions would be sort of assessing the current site conditions and what needs to either be removed or replaced, and that would be among them. But um, it's my understanding that the previous tenant and the applicant, when he testifies, may be able to give more details. They left maybe on short notice or didn't really clean out all of their items. So, But the MUN doesn't allow for outdoor storage, so it wouldn't be part of the review process because that would have to go away, would it not? that outdoor storage area? Well, um, for that'd likely be one of the conditions is that the existing outdoor storage would be removed. Okay. Um, but typically, <coughs> excuse me, when, <coughs> when something is rezoned, that would sort of come in under the non-conforming. So like 38th Avenue, for example, was just rezoned to mixed-use neighborhood, but we didn't, we don't have the opportunity to go to every property owner that has outdoor storage and say, sorry, you're not allowed to do this now. So that's something that we would look at more specifically with the CUP. Does that answer the question? Yes. It would it. I usually don't do this. Um, would it be appropriate to put a condition on there that before the zoning is um, is approved, that the outdoor storage is addressed? Meredith, did you want to? Sure. I would hesitate to do that. Um, I think the you know the applicants in the audience. He doesn't have control of the property yet, but he can talk to you a little bit about his time frame and what he has in mind. And um, the other the other thing, if there's junk and trash back there, we could just do plain old code enforcement. Fair enough. Which might be an option, a better option. Okay. And then my other question is, MUN, 
um, uh, has to, uh, that zone district is not immune or um, is not, it has to, uh, I'm concerned about the noise. Um, so any noise, the property owner would have to follow the current noise restrictions, et cetera. Yep, sure. So the city's noise standards and nuisance standards apply uniformly to any commercial zone district. Okay. Um, again, with the conditional use permit, we have the opportunity to have an extra layer of review, and that would be one of the impacts that we could look at and make sure we're trying to mitigate that as much as possible. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Matthews, questions for Stan? Uh, yes, I have uh, some questions that are process oriented. Uh, if uh, this is going to go to Sioux City Council, and when will that happen? That will happen likely in April. So April 8th, I believe, is the date that we're targeting. What is the process for the conditional use permit? Sure. So um, we would receive an application, and that typically includes a written narrative. Um, which is not only a description of the operations of the business, but also addressing specific criteria we have for a conditional use permit. Um, it also includes a site plan that shows the exterior use of the site. Um, in this case, also likely a floor plan, so we understand sort of where the different functions are occurring within the building, particularly in proximity to the neighborhood. Um, and then the standard uh, proof of ownership permission from property owner and application. That goes on referral for our, our two-week period to utility agencies and city departments, same as the zone change. Um, and then the review is administrative. So it's just staff looking at um, business operations, site design, and any potential impacts. Okay. And sorry, and like the special use permit, which is our normal um, districts, a CUP can be if granted, it be, could be granted with conditions, and it can be granted to the applicant um, specifically to the applicant, to the property, or for a specific duration of time. But there's no public hearings on that conditional use permit? There are not. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my final question is uh, just a curiosity question to piggyback on uh, Commissioner Ohm's uh, comment. What's the uh, mixed-use zoning at uh, 44th and Upham? which actually would be within a half mile of... Uh, that's MUC. Yep, that's correct. That's closer to Wadsworth, so yeah, the property's near Wadsworth. Yeah, that, that, that's different than the mixed-use uh, neighborhood. Yeah. That is correct, yep. The mixed-use commercial where the, um, the new apartment building is mm -hmm. is a higher-intensity mixed-use zone district, so increased heights, increased... Um, more intense commercial uses. So this is less intense than the 44th and Upham That property. is correct. All right, thank you. Welcome. Commissioner Weaver, any questions for staff? Um, yeah, this. That's okay. Sure, um, there might be a blurry line. Typically, we, when we have a um, business owner coming in, outdoor storage applies to any sort of materials. So um, any materials or tools and inoperable vehicles. So. In the case of a traditional auto repair, that would apply to any car that's being worked on. Um, they have their separate screening requirements, but a parking lot would need to include just currently licensed and oper operable vehicles, and then any sort of other stuff outside would fall under the outdoor storage regulations. Does that make sense? Okay. Am I correct in that? Okay. I just have a couple of questions um, following up regarding this particular picture, this, this fence um, area here in the south. Uh, one of the, there's, there's discussion throughout that potentially um, there'll be improved fencing and new landscaping in this area. And then in the neighborhood meeting notes, um, there's a uh, question about how will the city ensure that it is installed and it says land use applications can be approved, denied, or approved with conditions. If an application was approved for a rezoning or conditional use permit, fencing or landscaping could be required as a conditions of approval. Mm -hmm. I think there's merit in having uh, incre uh, increased landscaping and fencing in this area as a buffer. Mm -hmm. would, st I guess from a, uh, would staff either have that as a condition on the conditional use permit or via the zoning? On the conditional use permit. Okay. And then um, it looks like, is the applicant looking at buying both these buildings? even though they're kind of connected to, via this internal hallway? Yeah, that's a good question. So 
if this building was to be constructed today, those two lots would have had to be consolidated. Right. So it is treated as one development parcel. The buildings are considered one building from the um, Jefferson County Assessor. So he's purchasing the two parcels, the full building between Pierce and Otis, um, and the zone change would apply to that entire piece. And it looks like based on the, the aerial here that there is that parcel line kind of bisects that building. Mm -hmm. Is is this create is this a nonconformity? I mean, potentially, is it is it if the applicant ends up with this, is it worthwhile for him to replat this into one parcel? <laughs> that may not be a requirement, right. but just a. Uh, yeah. Um, I I think not. I no mean, it is what it is. It's an existing situation. Unless he would propose some building modifications or um, uh, demo and rebuild, yeah, then we probably would. We also spoke with the chief building official about that the issue with the lot line. And Lauren, um, yeah, they didn't have any concerns. Again, it is, it doesn't meet our current standards, and there's probably other properties in the city that unfortunately have lot lines through buildings, um, but it's not something we would require at this point. And then a final question. This has probably occurred during the uh, conditional use permit application, um, because there'll be some type of, of I guess, um, car rebuilding and so forth. I assume that any type of paint booth or spray booth would be referred out through the fire districts and building department, right, for review on that? Okay. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions for staff at this time? Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. At this time, uh, we'll call forth the applicant, and um, if you'd please approach the podium and give us your name and address, and then any additional information that you feel like would be worthwhile for us. Good evening. I did want to say thank you for the Pledge of Allegiance. That was nice, so I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, my name is Steve Pelletier. My address is 480 South Garfield Street, Denver, Colorado. Um, they brought up some good points, and I wanted to address, she kind of said auto restoration company. Our main business is just parts. In lieu of that, we kind of get questions from our customers, hey, I bought this part, can you help me put it on? And that's kind of evolved into the restoration part of it. But that's the minimal side of it. It does require a small spray booth. The technology that we use for our paint now is a waterborne process, so the process we use to thin it is actually deionized water, which you can buy at a 7-Eleven store. So the days of the heavy chemicals and all that, the EPA has mandated all that uh, away from even being sold to the public. The other process of the spray booths, they used to be basically just a fan in the wall with a house filter, and you'd see the dust blowing out the back. And those days are gone. Now the filters have to be 99.9% .9 efficient with a double filter system. The fans have to be gear driven and all that, so the noise is real low. The uh, stuff exiting out of the fan at the top of the building or the stack is just hot air, and the EPA mandates how often we change those filters. We regulate that where they're disposed of, and the fines have gotten pretty stiff in the last two years, so it's basically kind of weeded out the, if you want to call it knuckle draggers, guys painting in the back of the garage, blowing fumes out into the neighborhoods and so forth. You guys brought up some great points about noise, fencing, and so forth, so I'll kind of address some of those, and if you have questions afterward, please ask me. I went around and met with most of the surrounding neighbors before we did the neighborhood meeting because I didn't just want to put up a sign and not have them know what we were planning there. And they had some concerns about a tree, the fencing, and the landscaping, so I actually proposed at the neighborhood meeting that I would put a fence up to their style that they like, uh, the trees, I'd like to do some type of pine tree or something that's going to have needles on it all year long to kind of buffer any type of noise. And then if we go back to this shot of the building, you can kind of see the two-story building I want to leave alone. I'm not going to do any type of business out of there for myself. I want to turn around and re-rent that out to either a doctor or dentist. I have some medical people and kind of keep that as a professional building. There'd be no automotive work being done in that two-story building to the west side. The east side building, if you look at the building, you'll see on the back south side, there's kind of a dot vent in that back portion. That back section was created or built on afterward, and that's like a 3,000 square foot section. What I proposed is to use that for my dry kind of cold storage and operate mostly in the front half of the building. So any painting, noise, or stuff like that would be buffered not only by that 3,000 square foot section, which has a 14 inch wall in there, but then also the pine trees, and I would like to propose an eight-foot fence coming out to the street to help those neighbors. So they're not real happy with looking at that building anyway, which wasn't my doing, but they've asked, and I 
be more than happy to put that in the conditional use that that stuff be taken care of within 30 days of me acquiring the building so that you guys and the neighbors know that I'm not going to drag it out for six years saying, okay, I'm going to build a fence or I'm going to cut the trees down. The neighbor to the west side has literally begged me to come in and cut the trees down. I just can't do anything until I own the property. And it is. It's been abandoned. There's couches. There's a lean-to back there. There's cushions. Um, I've talked to my banker today. If I can get approval, final approval on April 8th for the next meeting, I can close on the building April 9th. I can have a dumpster in there on April 10th and literally have that place cleaned up within 24 to 48 hours. And that's my intention. There was another question about parking and outside storage and stuff like that. With that much square footage, right now I operate in 4,300 square foot. The business has kind of remained at a half a million dollars for the last 23 years, which is taxable revenue. Um, I don't see it growing too much. I'm kind of comfortable at this level. This is a retirement plan for me, so I can more than operate, park everything inside, inside that 9,300 square feet. My understanding of no outside storage means that Unless the car is operable, plates and clean and shiny and looks nice, that could be left in the parking lot overnight. But anything with like a fender off of it, uh, no wheels or whatever, all that stuff would have to be inside after 5 o'clock business hours, which is how Lauren kind of explained it to me. And that's how we operate now. Most of the cars we work on, the minimum value is twenty to $30,000. We just had a half-million-dollar car in our shop. I can't even leave that car outside during the day for sake of somebody coming by hitting it or stealing a part off of it. So... When you think of a restoration, body shop, auto mechanic shop, it's not really who we are. We're kind of like a very, very light automotive. In the realm of like oil changes and transmissions, we might bring a customer's car in, remove their engine transmission, we put it in a truck and it goes off to a mechanic shop and it gets rebuilt and it stays there until we're ready for it and then it comes back and we just put it back in the car. So I'm not gonna have signs out there for $29.99 oil changes this month. and free checkups and all that stuff. It's just not our business. It's a very low-key business. If I didn't open the garage doors, you probably wouldn't know we're open unless you saw the lights on. So it's a low impact as far as for the neighborhood and all that. And speaking with the neighbors, they just asked me if I could move as much of my operation to the front side towards 44th, and I've agreed to that with them. So that's my plan, and that's kind of what I hope to do there. Thank you. Let's see if the uh, commissioners have any questions. Uh, Commissioner Oman. I think I just have a comment on the um, on the eight foot height fence. Um, I don't really have any objections to it, but the, between staff and, and yourself, uh, it looks like there's a circular drive on Otis that the the um, resident is using, and so just site visibility concerns on that corner. Look, that, I think that's probably why they have that fence shortened. So yeah. that, that's a that's a small small detail. But they they had asked me if I would put in for a variance to get an eight foot fence, and I said I would definitely try and apply for it. I think Lauren told me a six-foot fence is acceptable without applying for a variance. But again, I, you know, if the if the neighborhood wants an eight-foot fence, and I told them if they want the pretty side to face their property and the ugly side of the fence to face mine, I'd be happy to do that. But I really want to, if if they want something, they want a certain type of tree, I'll be happy to put that in there. Thank you. Commissioner Drain, any questions for the applicant? Okay, Commissioner Brinkman. So I have to say that I'm very happy um, having several classic Mopars um, <laughs> that, that this is moving into the neighborhood or hopefully moving into the neighborhood. I'm glad to hear um, that you hope to address um, the current condition of the property. Um, um, my, only qu my only question is because there's only one address on that building and I've walked that property trying to figure out why there's only one address on that building when it looks like it was built there were two buildings and they they built this little thing in the middle I like the gate by the way but um that thing that um so uh, I would like to explore changing it to two addresses that, for that simply if I were to lease it out and that's really easy for us to do especially if um, it's not the same business. That would be, of course, confusing not only for the post office but patrons of either of the businesses. So that would be a very easy fix. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, um, your answers are great. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioner Matthews. <coughs> Commissioner Weaver. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in. And we, uh, we may, at the end of this, we may ask you a couple more. But thank you so much. We thank appreciate that. Time.
At this time, um, we'll open up the uh, hearing to anyone in the public who would like to either um, comment on this particular case, either in favor or opposition, or just um, ask general questions. <clears throat> there are three people in the audience. Do any of you all have a desire to speak? If not, that's fine. You don't, certainly don't have to. You can be just here for information. I think, okay. You wanna, you wanna speak, sir? No. Okay, okay. So seeing um, no one in the audience, are there any other questions for staff after the applicant? Okay, so with that, um, I will uh, close this public hearing on this particular case and welcome any discussion from the commissioners. Um, and if there's no discussion, my motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. I move to recommend approval of case number WZ1301, a request for approval of a zone change from restricted commercial to mixed use neighborhood for a property located at 6700 West 44th Avenue for the following reasons. One, the proposed zone change will not adversely impact the public health, safety, or welfare. Two, the proposed zone change is consistent with the goals and objectives of the city's comprehensive plan. Three, the proposed zone change is compatible with the surrounding area. Second. I have a first and a second on an approval motion for this particular case. Any discussion on this? Okay. Seeing none, then I will call for a vote. So congratulations, that, that has gone through. So that will be heard again at City Council in a public hearing in April? On April 8th, likely. April 8th, great. <laughs> this process is all new to me, so if nothing changes between now and April 8th as far as any neighborhood complaints, would it be the same type of vote with the same people on April 8th? The reason I ask is because I can move my closing closer. I just don't want to plunk down 700000 and not get the zoning, but I would even be willing to start cleaning up the property sooner, and I'm not asking you to commit. To, I just don't, I don't know the process. So is it? Uh, I'll, I'll default on that one to staff on their, on their professional recommendation on that. Um, I, I would just leave things as it, I mean, as is as far as your closing. If you, if the bank is okay with you going out there and doing some preliminary cleanup, you know, I'm certain, I'm sure people would appreciate that, yeah, but. Let me check with them and, you know, I, I just didn't know if it would be the same process on April 8th and, and It's the same process as far as um, the presentations and testimony tonight, but it's a different group of people. Right. Okay. So, yeah. And they have a different purview. So we have a purview um, looking at the zoning code, um, looking at use, looking at cetera. The, um, the city council, has the view of the people, the the citizens. Okay. So they they take input, et cetera. They have a different, kind of a broader view, where we have a very um, um, constrained, defined view, okay. and that's why we only can make recommendations on on these sort of things. Okay, great. That explains it. So thank you. I was just willing to go in and start cleaning <laughs> tomorrow. So, All right. Thank you so. Thank you. Thank you. So at this particular point, um, everyone in the audience is welcome to uh, sit through the rest of the meeting. You're certainly welcome to, to leave. If you do leave, please leave quietly. We do have a, a little bit of uh, commission business left, okay? So with that, um, we do move into the other items. We do have election of officers tonight. And we can certainly turn off the, uh, the televised portion of the hearing at this time.